Hey all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Taylor Brower and I'm a software engineer living in Texas. I'm so glad you were able to join today and I hope you're having a amazing day. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what is on my M1 MacBook Pro 2021 edition. So right now, what I have on my Mac, I'm gonna cover some apps that I use day to day, some apps that I don't really use, and I'm gonna cover some Chrome extensions that I really like. And that's pretty much gonna cover what is on my Mac. I really hope you enjoy and find this useful or at least entertaining. And so without further ado, let's dive into it and see what is on my M1 MacBook Pro. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna cover is the desktop of my M1 MacBook Pro. It's kind of an app, it's the operating system, so I'm using Mac OS, obviously, and this is my desktop here. Uh, if we go into the system preferences in general, you can see that I'm just using the auto theme. I like it to switch between light and dark, um, and I'm just using this accent color. I really never understood why they give you this because it's not like the color changes based on the accent. It's always blue, so I don't know what's up with that. And Google Chrome is my default browser. And then going to the right here, I just have a bunch of random stuff on the desktop. Yes, I know some people like to have their desktops very tidy. I'm one of those that will just throw the most commonly used stuff that I have on there because I, I want quick access to it. I don't really care if my desktop is messy. And some random stuff that we have is just some screenshots, some YouTube thumbnails you can see there. And then I have my code folder, which if I open this up, this is where I have all of my projects, my coding projects particularly that I'm working on or that I've done in the past. And then I just have various folders, like here's Figma, it has some Figma projects in it. And then just some random other files. We have a uh, Lightroom edit, here's all my pictures. And then pictures from Luminar, Pixelmator, random stuff. And then I also have my bar down here at the bottom. And then these are just my common apps that I use. I like my bar on the bottom and I like it to go away when I move my mouse. It's just my preference. All right, and that is my desktop. The first app that I wanna talk about is Notion. And Notion is my productivity powerhouse. It's where I organize all my projects. I have it just in this one Notion app and I can basically manage all my projects from there. And actually, I'm using it right now on my phone because I have my script there. And yeah, I can, I can just organize by YouTube, I can organize by coding projects, I can organize by Instagram posts, photography projects, and I have all these categories here on the left which houses my projects in like a table. And I can click into each one, I can add notes, I can add scripts, whatever I need to do. And then they're all relational databases, so they all link to one master database, which is my personal projects. And there I have all of them listed out. I have tags on them so that I can see like, okay, this one is YouTube, this one is Instagram, this one is coding. And I just have like a one central place to view all my projects. And then I can see by completed status, the checkboxes on the right, which ones are completed, which ones are in flight and it really helps me organize things. And then all those are consolidated in my personal homepage, which is like a 30,000 feet overview. I have my personal projects, same table as before, but below that I have the individual categories in like a Kanban board. So I can see each one in a Kanban board and see exactly like where they are. It's really cool. It's a really helpful tool. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. Every, every app that I talk about here I'm not sponsored by it or getting paid to promote them. I just really like these apps. So just a little disclaimer there. All right, on to the next one. Okay, now that I covered Notion, I wanna talk about my actual coding apps that I use. And the first main one that I use is my IDE. And I use WebStorm. I like WebStorm so much because I am primarily a JavaScript developer. It has everything under the sun for JavaScript. There is the built-in terminal. Of course, it has the editor. There are numerous plugins that will automatically detect whatever files you're putting in. So say you're putting in like .env files. It won't natively support the .env files like right out of the box, but you just pop in your .env file and it will say, hey, do you want to install this plugin? Install the plugin, you're good to go. It has React snippets, so basically 
the same thing that you could get in VS Code where you can kind of shortcut your React component commands. WebStorm has that too. And I love WebStorm's version control. It's probably the thing that attracts me most about WebStorm is it's a graphical user interface. So I know that's kind of taboo around programmers is like, oh, like you're not using the terminal for your git commands. Like, no, I don't care about that. I just want to get the job done. And the GUI interface for your version control and WebStorm, top notch. Nothing can beat it in my opinion. Um, and yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really great editor. It is a paid editor, but it's so cheap. Like I pay something like $47 a year and that's nothing. Like I get, I get discounts on it every year too. So I'll get like 20% off like every year just because like there's nothing special. I just have a regular license and they just give me like 20% off every year. So it's, it's really cheap. It's a really great tool. I highly recommend it. The next tool that I use is Figma and Figma is really good for mocking up user interfaces. And I don't really use it for that, honestly. I've only really used it to create like iOS icons and I used it to create my YouTube banner. Well, my banner for everything, YouTube, Twitter. Um, does Instagram have a banner? I don't know if Instagram has a banner, but I used it to create a banner. I really like how it has like a hierarchy of components that you can put together. You can like group them and then it all runs on CSS. So you can take your CSS knowledge, apply it to that. It's basically like Photoshop with CSS. So that's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Another app that I use is iTerm. It's my terminal of choice. iTerm is super customizable. It's super easy to use. I basically just set up my aliases when I first set up iTerm on a new computer. And then I install power lines so that I have like that cool interface on iTerm. And if you want to see a video on how I do that on my iTerm, you can see that in my channel. I have a whole video that goes over how to customize iTerm. And then I also have Ganache, which is an application that connects to the Ethereum blockchain. And I really haven't done a lot with this yet, but I am interested in developing apps on the blockchain, I think that's super interesting. And Ganache is the tool to allow that to happen. So I, I do have it on my Mac and I'm excited to take more advantage of that tool. And I also use MongoDB Compass, which is a graphical interface tool used to connect to MongoDB servers. So if you create them locally or on MongoDB site, you can easily access them. You can view all the records. And it's a really nice tool for visualizing your data. So I use that all the time for my projects. Okay, now I wanna talk about my Chrome extensions that I use. And really all my Chrome extensions revolve around development or a good majority of them do. And the first one that I use is called Momentum. It's like a homepage kind of extension. So you get, you open a new tab and you get a randomized image for the day. And you get a little quote at the bottom of the page too. You get a new one every day. And then you can also type in your to-dos for the day so that you can kind of like track your day. And it's a really nice tool to see when you open a new tab instead of just a blanket of apps or just a static page. It's something a little more exciting and I've used it for quite some time now, like at least a couple years and I really enjoy it. The next one is called Color Pick Eyedropper. I know there are tons of eyedropper tools out there and basically what this is, is you can click it and drag around and it will select a color that whatever your mouse is hovering over. You can drill into that color, get its hex value, get its RGB value. What I like about this one is it just interfaces nicely with Chrome. I can just click it, click anywhere and get the color. You can also click on the page, get the color, and then click back on the extension and it will actually give you the HSL value, which is really nice. However, in a future update, I really hope to include the HLS value in the actual box when you click because RGB and hex, those are a little dated. Everyone's using HSL, so I hope it gets updated. And the next one is called JSON Formatter. This one is super simple. There's no customizability with it, but it makes such a big difference. It formats JSON for you. So if you go to a page that has an API request with a bunch of JSON data, it's typically displayed in like a really ugly 
string and you can't read any of it. It's so unreadable, but JSON Formatter just formats it really nicely for you. It spaces all the JSON out into data that is easy to consume. Another extension that I really like is called Wappalyzer. This doesn't really do anything for me development wise, but it's just kind of a fun app that I use. What it is, is you can go to any website, click on the Wappalyzer icon, and it will give you a breakdown of the text stack for that website that it detects. This is kind of cool to see what other websites are using for their tech stack, and some very widely, like some have like Windows Server, or some are using Node.js, or some are using like Google Analytics. You can really see like who's using what. It's pretty interesting. And then of course I have React DevTools, which is the React extension to Git if you are developing in React. It shows you all your React state. You can track your state and see all the different data there. React DevTools is definitely a must if you're developing in React. And then some apps that are not really related to coding that I use. One is Lightroom. That's what I use to edit all my pictures in. I have Lightroom and I have Pixelmator and I also have Luminar. I have all three on my M1 MacBook Pro. They all work phenomenally, but I just really like Lightroom's layout. I've been using it for a long time. I'm very familiar with how it works and that's the one that I prefer to use. Also, I for my video editing application, I use Final Cut Pro. So I have that on my M1 MacBook Pro. You can't really get that on any other computer unless you have an Apple computer and it's just been awesome. With the power of the M1 chip, Final Cut Pro just rips on this machine. It's it's so great, I like it a lot. Finally, I use NordVPN, which isn't really related to really productivity or anything. I mean, I guess it's kind of related to coding, but it's what I use to keep secure whenever I'm not on my Wi-Fi network. And it's important to me because it's super important nowadays to protect your data and be sure that you are on a secure connection. And whenever I'm out coding in the wild, which isn't very far these days because of the virus, it's typically just downstairs in my apartment lounge. But um, it, it's best to, to stay protected and NordVPN is the software I choose. Again, I'm not sponsored. They're not paying me to say this. I just really like the app. Um, same with all these apps. Okay, and that was a look at all the apps that I'm currently using on my M1 MacBook Pro. I really hope this was helpful. I hope that you guys got value out of this. I hope it was interesting. And I hope that you learned about some apps that you hadn't heard before. That would be really great. And I recommend that you try these apps. These apps are really cool. I like them a lot. And that is pretty much what I have on my M1 MacBook Pro. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You all are awesome. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this content and you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I exited out that way this time. Did you like that? I don't know about the whole exit thing. Um, just kind of something I started doing. So uh, if you like the exit outro where I just get up randomly and leave, uh, leave a comment down below. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya for